Well, hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the DC Capstone Report. It's great to have each and every one of you tuning in and listening each week. Uh, Lance and I sure appreciate the loyal support that we get from our listeners out there. And I want to thank Lance Shores, who's back in the studio producing all of this, making it all possible for us to be on each and every week. And I'd love for you to go out and uh, look at some of Lance's other sites, RollTideBama.com, FreelancePictures.com. He has some great pictures up. If you're coming to the Alabama football game this week and you're a million-dollar band parent or a Crimson Net parent or a uh, uh, you know, majorette parent, if you if you come in this week and you want to get some pictures of your uh, uh uh, students that are cheerleaders or something Lance does a great job before the game getting a lot of pictures and they'll be up on his site at uh, RollTideBamba.com if you get a copy of those pictures so I want to thank Lance and all he does uh, for making this possible well it's a football week here on the podcast and we look forward to talking about a game Alabama has a game against Middle Tennessee the Blue Raiders this coming Saturday uh, kick off at 6 p.m. in Bryant-Denny Stadium this coming Saturday and we uh, looking forward to talking about a game. So to this this week on the podcast, in the first segment, we're going to preview the upcoming game against the Middle Tennessee State Blue Raiders. In our second statement, uh, segment, we're going to take a look at the uh, players to watch on the offensive side of the ball for Alabama. In our third and final segment, uh, we'll take a look at the players to watch on the defensive side of the ball. You're listening to the D.C. Capstone Report. The D.C. Capstone Report is featured each Tuesday morning on the Martin Houston Show at Tide 100.9. You can listen live at Tide100.9.com. Well, welcome back to the D.C. Capstone Report. It is so great to be with you to talk about a football game. Fall camp has come to a close, and and we're in uh, week preparation for the Middle Tennessee State game. It's great to be able to talk about what Alabama is going to do and going to play a game this week. Just got through uh, listening to the uh, Alabama football save, coach saving press conference that was live just a few minutes ago. So I've got all the information. Uh, one thing is he didn't put out a depth chart this year, so no depth chart. He said that puts a lot of emphasis on players to quit working if they, if they don't find themselves on the depth chart. So he didn't want to put that pressure on everyone. He wants everybody to know they have an opportunity to continue to work. So the key thing that came out of the press conference was that that uh, Alabama uh, was not going to put out a depth chart uh, going into the first game against Middle Tennessee State this week. The second thing I took from the press conference was Alabama needs to establish an identity for itself uh, going into this game. Uh, not just win this game, but establish an identity for itself that will help it carry on throughout the rest of the season. So. Let's take a look at this preview of this Alabama Middle Tennessee State game. Not the marquee matchup that a lot of folks expect in the first game for Alabama. Uh, that uh, usually we're playing a kickoff classic in Atlanta or uh, Texas or Miami. Uh, but here we are in, uh, in playing at home uh, to kick off the season at Bryant Denny Stadium. What better place that you could be to enjoy a great crowd and Saban spoke of that a little bit uh, coach Saban spoke of that a little bit today about how the crowd will be great there great atmosphere for his team to play in well what can we expect from this game in the middle tennessee state well coach rick stocksdale has been there with them for quite some time and he has them on a very up-tempo offense the team comes off a uh a, a last year eight and five record won a bowl game they also uh, beat a top 25 opponent in miami last year uh, so they come in with a great offensive game plan, a very aggressive defense. Uh, they play press coverage and, and really play well uh, in their defensive backfield. So that sets up a challenge for Alabama. But I think the main challenge is going to be on, on the, the, the defensive side of the ball uh, for Alabama to stop an up-tempo, uh, flashy, spread them wide type uh, offense that Middle Tennessee State is going to be in. They're going to take some deep shots. They're going to take some – put some pressure on our safeties and our uh, our cornerbacks. We're going to see right fast. Uh, they're going to want to pay, play fast, kind of like Tennessee did against us. And they're going to try to take big plays. Last year against uh, Miami, they won that Miami game. I think they put up uh, uh, several big plays. They won uh, in that game because of the big plays, the explosive plays, big chunks of yards down the field. And they, they're, they're a team that capitalizes with fast, up-tempo play. As soon as they have an opportunity – uh, to get a first down, to get a big play, they're uh, trying their best to get another play off within a few seconds to put the uh, 
uh, pressure on your defense. So uh, this game is going to definitely come down to Middle Tennessee State playing well. Uh, if they do that and line up against Alabama, it'll be a challenge for Alabama. So what's Alabama got to do on, on Alabama's side of the ball? What do they have to do when they go into this game? Uh, well, number one, I think the – uh, the, the number one thing that Alabama needs to do and, and go a long way in establishing an identity for this team is to control the line of scrimmage. And what do I mean by that? I mean when we have the ball on offense, control the line of scrimmage. Block, uh, set the tone, be physical up front, uh, move the ball, run the ball, uh, uh, you know, get gain yardage on first down by running the ball to set up opportunities for play action passing down the field. So. I think the number one thing Alabama needs to do to, in this ball game is control the line of scrimmage on offense and control the line of scrimmage on defense. I think that means we play physical up front, push uh, push the pocket, uh, make sure our uh, outside linebackers and our defensive line when are pushing the pocket, uh, you know, don't give them time to make those explosive uh, th- plays deep down the field. Uh, make sure we put pressure on the quarterback. So we can do that by controlling the line of scrimmage. I think that's very important. Second thing I think this Alabama team needs to do is to limit turnovers and limit mistakes uh, as far as penalties-wise. The team last year had a, had a problem with these penalties and making um, mistakes uh, that, that are uncharacteristic of Alabama team. So I think we need to see improvement of that coming out against Middle Tennessee State, and that's not turn the ball over, don't make silly penalties and silly mistakes. If we can do that, I feel like that uh, – uh, we we will really go go a long way of establishing an identity for this team this year, and third and finally, I think uh, we need to make sure uh, that we have good third down efficiency on both sides of the ball. What does that mean? Well, on defense, it means we need to get off the field on third down. We need to hold them, get them into a third and long situation, and stop them and get off the field. Uh, the less time they have on the field, the better off we are because they can't uh, utilize that explosive offense that they like to do. They can't have up-tempo if we can get them in three and out. So we need to get off the field on third down when we have opportunities. And on offense, that means that we need to put ourselves in makeable third down conversions uh, by running the ball uh, uh, and getting chunk yardage, uh, six, seven, eight yards on first, second down, and then getting a manageable – uh, uh, to keep extending our uh, extending our series of, of downs on third down. So I believe, honestly, in this game, if we can control the line of scrimmage, both on offense and defense side of the ball, if we can limit our turnovers and limit our mistakes, show improvement in that area, and then third down efficiency on both sides of the ball. If we do that, I think we come out of this game a, a big winner. And I don't think I think that it'll, it'll go a long way in establishing the identity of this Alabama team this year if we do exactly those three things. Well, we're on to the second segment of the DC Capstone Report. Thank you again for tuning in this week to listen to us. You can always follow us at dccapstonereport.com. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, Facebook at DC Capstone Report. Uh, you can also check out our, my Twitter feed at davidcott50. Again, thanks, Lance, for helping us get this up today on, on, on all the work that he does in producing this podcast. Couldn't do this without him. And, of course, we couldn't do this without our great sponsors, RollTieBama.com, FreelancePictures.com. And then our sponsor that allows us to be with you each and every week is Karen Cottingham Riddleter with the Keller Williams Group, the Williams Group at Keller Williams right here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Uh, you can contact Karen Cottingham for all your real estate needs at 205-887-4008, or you can look at her website at www.karen.thewilliamsgroupal.com. If you're thinking about selling, you're thinking about buying, she's the one. She can take care of you all across the state of Alabama. If you're thinking about buying that condo here in Tuscaloosa for game day, uh, she's the one to talk to about that as well. But for all your real estate needs, reach out to Karen Cottingham of the Williams Group at Keller Williams at 205-887-4008. Well, here in the second segment, we're going to take a look at players to watch on the offensive side of the ball. Well, everybody wants to know, it's the question that everybody's talked about all offseason, who's going to be the quarterback? Well, you know, two weeks ago, I told you who I thought was going to be the quarterback, and nothing has changed in my mind. I think the look uh, as the Alabama comes out for the first offensive series, I think Jalen Milrow, will be your quarterback. So take a look and watch for him. What should we watch for in Jalen Milrose's play? 
Uh, we, Coach Saban today in the press conference said he'd seen improvement from him, his pocket presence, his passing ability, his ability to limit mistakes and errors, his confidence. All those things uh, he said today he'd improved on from this year from last year. So we want to see that improvement when he goes out. How does he lead the team, get us in the right play, make the right throws, run the ball when, when needed, uh, but stay in the pocket and look, look downfield on his progressions. If he can do that, I think Jalen Miller will have an opportunity to lead this uh, Bama team. And if he can keep, and Coach Saban said, if he keeps doing it consistently, uh, then he'll be, uh, he'll be the quarterback uh, going an extended period of time. I think what that means is that there's always competition at every position, and quarterbacks, no doubt, no doubt the same in this, this, this year. Ty Simpson, I think, is running second string at this point. Uh, although we don't have a depth chart, that appears to be the way the, the carries have been going as far as who's coming out with the team. So I think look for Ty Simpson to get the playing time in this game. And I wouldn't be surprised if you don't see Tyler Buckner maybe late in this game get a few uh, 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 snaps himself. Or if it's a big blowout, maybe even Dylan Lonergan get a chance. But I think your top top two quarterbacks, the pat battle has been, to, been between Jalen Milrow and Ty Simpson. I look for Jalen Milrow to come out at quarterback and watch for him in this game and see if he can make and show the improvement uh, that Coach Saban talked about today that he's seen. The second uh, offensive players you want to look for is offensive linemen. Look at that offensive line. Uh, can we control the line of scrimmage? Can we push the defense – off the line of scrimmage. Uh, there were so many times last year that we weren't able to get a good push. Uh, I think we're going to look look to see if you see their focus now on running the ball, knowing that they're going to run the ball, and getting in a position uh, to knock their play, uh, defensive players off the line of scrimmage. So I think early on, our offensive line, when we have the ball, needs to assert themselves on, to dominate that line. So I look for them to have a big, big afternoon. And uh, right now, uh, I, I think – that is going to be the key to us is to run the ball. And I think that starts with a great deep, deep running back room. But the player to watch, I think, is Jace McClellan. I think it's his year. He showed flashes of brilliance last year against, uh, against Texas. Uh, I think he's worked really hard on the off season, And I, I look for him to really assert himself early in this game with some good explosive runs down the field. So look for Jace McClellan to – to really uh, look good in this game. Another player to watch, I think, is in the wide receiver room. Uh, and that is a player I want to highlight is Jermaine Burton. From all, everybody I've heard from uh, this, this offseason has said he's made a change in his attitude. And I think that he's always had the skill set, but I'm not sure he meshed really well with the Alabama culture. But I think he's really bought in this year. So I look for Jermaine Burton to have a presence early to be the go-to receiver uh, for Jalen Milrow. So look for Jane Burton to get some touches early. And I wouldn't be surprised also to see the tight ends. Just watch the tight ends across the board from uh, C.J. Dupree to uh, Amari Nye Black, uh, all, all across the board to get some touches uh, from, the, from the quarterback passes early in this game. I think that's what Tommy Reese likes to do, and I think this game will be no different. Well, the newcomer to watch on offense, I want everybody to look out for, is a true freshman, massive, uh, offensive tackle from Iowa, Caden Proctor. When Kennington Smith, the athletic writer, the writer for the athletic, was on our show the first the first show of the season, he talked about this kid from Iowa that he covered there uh, when he was uh, working the Iowa beat, and he told me then that he thought he might uh, uh, be able to compete for for a starting position. It looks like he's just done that, taking opportunities when Elijah Pritchett has been dinged up. I think there's still some uh, competition there. But well, I wouldn't be surprised to see Caden Proctor start as a true freshman at that left side. And if that's true, then watch to make sure that he can protect the blind side on Jalen Milrow. In the past, Jalen Milrow's had some issues with fumbles, and the, the, the one thing you don't want to have is a blind side block be missed and uh, an open shot at your quarterback uh, when he's going to throw the ball and it causes an, an explosive play for the defense. So watch for Caden Proctor, a newcomer, on the offensive line uh, to be able to see what he can do uh, to to solidify this offensive line, uh, if he if he plays well and protects quarterback well, he may just very well win that starting job in the first game. Well, welcome back to the DC Capstone Report. We're here on the third and final segment today, and we're going to talk about the defense. What players to watch on defense? Well, overall, I think this is going to be a big 
improvement for Alabama this year. That Kevin Steele defense, everything I've heard in the offseason, fall camp, that the aggressiveness is back, the aggressive style of play is back, the press coverage is back, the blitzing is back. Uh, so I, I think that the Bama standard of hard-nosed, tough defense is back. The question is, will there be enough defensive players to be able to run through the gauntlet of a four-quarter game and still be there pressing at the end? And I think that remains to be seen if that's true or not. But we got a lot of players. We have enough depth uh, to do and play the kind of aggressive style that uh, Kevin Steele likes to play. Well, let's look at some of the players to look for and watch on defense. I think it starts up front with our outside linebackers. You know, last year was all on Will Anderson. Uh, junior, he was a great, phenomenal player and really has shown in the NFL this year how good he really can be when you put him in the right defenses and right positions. But he was so great last year, we seem to forget that the two people behind him was really great as well. Uh, Dallas Turner and Chris Braswell get the start this year. Uh, at that outside line, uh, linebacker role. Uh, and I really believe that they have an opportunity to, to, to have more sacks this year uh, working in tandem with this defensive line. So my two players to watch on the line this, this week are the, the, the end of the line, and that's those outside linebackers, uh, Dallas Turner and Chris Bradshaw. You know, Chris Bradshaw played himself onto the field last year in what's called the cheetah package because he just couldn't, couldn't be kept off uh, because of his talent. Uh, so I think he's a, it's a freakish athlete. Uh, he's, he's got some quick moves. He's strong as an ox. And I think when you put that in conjunction with Dallas Turner, with him working together in the right, poss- right defensive schemes, uh, they're really going to be the, the, the bright spot on that defensive line across the front. And I think the man in the middle is Jaheim Otis. Uh, Jaheim Otis is another guy who's really established himself. So I think you look for him uh, in the middle to make a, uh, make a, make a difference as well. In the, in the de- defensive backfield, safety position is where I want to start to spotlight a couple of players. Number one is a true freshman, Caleb Downs. Uh, Coach uh, Saban spoke in his press conference today glowingly about him being uh, mature for his age, knowing about football, knowing, catching on the schemes. So I look for a true freshman, Caleb Downs, to start at safety at Alabama, much like we've seen in the past with Minka Fitzpatrick. I don't want to put that comp on him to get pressure on him, but I think when, you get, when you're a true safety and you come in, you have the ability to start at Alabama. Uh, that, that bodes well for you, like it, had, like it did for Minka Fitzpatrick. But Caleb Downs, is in, in all estimations of what I've heard, is the real deal. Have an opportunity to come in and really participate and make an impact for this defensive team in the, in the safety position. Now, the other guy's a newcomer as well, but I highlight him as my newcomer to watch because we don't know much about him. He's a newcomer, but he's had experience. That's the transfer, Jalen Key. You know, Jalen Key comes in, transferred in from UAB. He's got a lot of experience of playing, and and everybody I've spoken with in this offseason camp has said what he's done to make strides uh, in, in, in knowing this system, learning this system, and really playing well and playing up to full speed. When he plays at full speed, he brings a, an added element to this uh, the safety uh, backfield there. So I think him, with, with the experience he's had, although it's not at Alabama, it's still college experience back there with Caleb Downs. So I look for Caleb Downs and Jalen Key to start in that backfield. Not sure if that's going to be the case, but I, I look for them to stop, start back there. You know, it's, another option would be Malachi Moore. I think he can also play the safety position, but in my opinion, he's better at the star. So look to see if Caleb Downs and newcomer Jalen Key can start in that defensive backfield. Uh, you know, Devontae Smith, I will mention his name. He, I had him leading as a starter there for a while. He'd done some great things in practice, but I understand from Coach Saban today that he's had a, a foot injury uh, that's caused him and held him back. And when he gets pretty healthy, he'll be able to, uh, to uh, participate as well. And he said Christian Story was a very good player uh, that could So I think we have depth at that safety position. So uh, look for Jalen Jalen Key uh, as a newcomer in that safety position to really add some experience back there with first year freshman starter Caleb Downs. Well, uh, overall, I think as we close out this podcast, what would you expect to see from Alabama, Middle Tennessee State? And what's my prediction for the game? I know you want to know who who I think is going to win. Why well, I think that Alabama goes into this game and establishes its identity by, by uh, controlling the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball, 
I'm going to describe an identity of a smash mouth, in your face, offense, defense, show up and run the ball, and then when you least expect it, uh, set up for play action passes to hit some deep balls down the field. I think our deep defensive backs are going to be challenged by Middle Tennessee State's upstyle tempo play, much like Tennessee. But I think we rise to the challenge in this game, and we have an opportunity to, uh, you know, show show our defensive aggressiveness as well as what this offense is capable of. So I think in the end, Alabama has a successful outing against Middle Tennessee State. I think our defense holds them, and Alabama comes away with a huge victory in this game. And I got the scores being Alabama 49, Middle Tennessee State 10. Well, that's it this week for the D.C. Capstone Report. I hope you all have enjoyed it. Tune in. uh, Let your friends know about us. uh, Check us out each and every week here for a new podcast. Again, thanks to Lance Shores, who runs the ship back in the studio, making all these things possible. And for our great sponsors, RollTideBama.com, FreelancePictures.com, and Karen Cottingham, Realtor of the Williams Group at Keller Williams for all your real estate needs. That's it for this week. This is DC signing off with a big roll tide.